Welcome to a what I eat in a day video. This is a work from home edition day because I have been really trying hard to keep my blog updated with new recipes and also film some YouTube shorts. I'm gonna be filming two different videos today. I also made a really special dinner and a delicious soup recipe that I know you're gonna to wanna to try. Thank you to Scentbird for teaming up with me and let's go ahead and get started with this what I eat in a day. For breakfast on this day, I wanted to make some oatmeal with cinnamon apples on top. So I just went ahead and I combined some old fashioned oats with cinnamon, salt, and water. And then once all the water is absorbed, I then add some plant milk to make it nice and creamy. For the cinnamon apples, I just roughly chop an apple. I like this to be in kind of bite-sized pieces. And I add that to a pan with a pinch of salt, which brings out the natural juices in the apples. I add cinnamon, a little bit of allspice, and of course some brown sugar and vanilla with a splash of water. And that kind of creates a sauce when it cooks down with the apple juice. I let that simmer until the apples are nice and soft and fragrant. And I add that on top of the oatmeal along with lots of that delicious brown sugar apple cinnamon juice. I added a little bit of unsweetened almond and milk yogurt and some tahini with crunchy walnuts and that was my breakfast. It took about 10 minutes but my goodness was this delicious and pretty well balanced too. kitchen for most of the day today because I'm working on a fall soup recipe series and I'm going to film two of those soup recipes today. So it's going to be for YouTube shorts and basically that means in addition to my Sunday videos, I've also been posting on YouTube shorts every day and right now I'm working on a week long fall recipe series where I do a different soup recipe every day of the week for seven days. So I'm really excited about this series and today I'm going to be filming a video for my broccoli spinach soup which is one of my favorites. It's healthy comforting and it's made with pantry staples, frozen vegetables, and an onion. So it's super easy. And I'm also going to be filming a video for my pasta fagioli and that's probably also going to be part of our dinner tonight. So that's usually how it works. If I'm working on a recipe video or taking pictures for the blog, that naturally just kind of gets incorporated into my day and ends up being my meal or at least part of my meal. Lots of cooking to be done today and it's the kind of thing that really does require a lot of energy because I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm filming, I'm taking pictures. And I think any of you who work from home know that it can be hard to kind of get into your sort of awake, alive energy mode when you are in your cozy space. You know, but I think one of the things that really helps me is getting a little bit ready for the day as if I was going out. And even if I don't do makeup or anything, I think scent is like the quickest gateway to whatever mood I'm trying to achieve. Cause there's some scents that make me feel really relaxed and they're kind of spa-like and herbal and very serene. There's some that are very clean and fresh and make me feel awake and peppy. There's like date night scents that are kind of warm and spicy and earthy. It's all just different vibes and different moods. And I love how scent is a really just instant way of transporting yourself to that kind of energy and that headspace. And so that's what I do on days like this. I try to get myself a little bit ready and I always wear perfume even though I'm here by myself because it really does help me and the perfume that I'm using right now is from Scentbird and I'm really happy to be able to team up with them because they give you guys 55% off which is great because this is a really good size sample like most perfume samples are teeny tiny and with this you get a 30 day supply and they have over 600 designer perfumes on the website and a lot of them are cruelty free and vegan and I personally love commodity I know I've talked about them in videos before but one thing that's really cool about them is they have the same scent but different expressions so I have book in personal but they also have a book bold and a book expressive and I thought it'd be fun to get the book bold and compare it because the notes are a little bit different so for book bold the notes are amber cedarwood eucalyptus sandalwood and violet and one of my favorite things on the website is they have information about the individual notes and it really helps you to have an understanding of what the different notes are and therefore what you really like it makes it so much easier to pick out perfumes and this one has a lot of complexity to it it's warm it's spicy i think it's definitely kind of an evening date night scent I really, really like it. And if you like Palo Santo and Santal and those kinds of scents, this is very much like that. And it was really fun to compare that to the book Personal Scent, which I think I really love best personally. But this one has a bergamot, black tea, cedarwood, sandalwood, and skin moss. It smells a lot like Tenoir from Lalabo, 
but this was eight dollars and that one is like a jillion so i really really love scentbird it's such a cool way to try perfumes so if you guys want to check them out you can click the link in the description box below and use my code that will get you 55 percent off you can also scan the code that you see on the screen here i really hope you guys enjoy that i'm going to prep for filming and then i will see you guys at lunchtime <laughs> So it is lunchtime now and I actually just got done filming a recipe for my broccoli spinach soup. I made this recipe two years ago, but I never made a blog post for it or a short form video. I just have this video right here, which I still love, and the recipe's in the description box below. But I love having my blog as kind of like a central place for all my recipes and slowly but surely, I'm trying to make sure that all my recipes live there so that no matter what, you guys can always go to NikkiVegan.com, type in broccoli soup or whatever it is you may be looking for and you'll be able to eat easily find my recipes and I do also try to make sure that the video is linked in the blog post as well so that it's kind of like a one-stop shop for everything. So the first YouTube short that I filmed on this day was for the broccoli spinach soup. So I will show you a little sneak peek of how that turned out and also kind of walk you through the recipe, which again is going to be linked down below. This is a really creamy, rich soup, and it's truly one of my favorite ways to eat veggies because it's like cozy and comforting, but really great ingredients. You start by sauteing one onion and then you add your garlic. This is four cloves of garlic and you don't even have to chop it. Just add it straight to the pan along with salt, dried oregano and black pepper. Then I let that cook for a couple of minutes and add frozen broccoli, frozen spinach, and raw cashews. You don't even have to soak the cashews first, which is great. You can just add them straight to the pot along with some vegan veggie broth, vegan veggie broth, vegan chicken broth or veggie broth, whatever you like, and some water, and then let that cook. And when it cools down a little bit, you can blend it into this silky smooth soup. It gets really rich and creamy from the cashews, packed with vitamins. I seriously love this. It is so good for dipping into bread. I made a YouTube short for this recipe and I filmed that and I got some bite shots in. So I guess that was kind of like my pre-lunch, but now I want to actually eat my soup and enjoy it. And I'm also going to make a white bean tuna smash. It's kind of like chickpea tuna, but it's a little bit lighter and fresher. So I'm going to go ahead and make that, make a little sandwich. I've got some good sourdough bread and then we will have soup and sandwiches for lunch today, which sounds so perfect. This is great because you can really do this to taste. You're just gonna need a can of white beans rinsed and drained, a handful of parsley, a handful of chopped yellow onion, and one stalk of celery. I just chopped this up all at once in my little ninja bullet to make it easy and to make sure all the pieces are really nice and small. The onion and the fresh parsley really makes this pop and just adds so much bright zingy flavor. Then I add some fresh lemon juice, some sweet dill pickle relish, a little bit of Dijon mustard, dried dill, salt, and pepper. I also love to add some fresh Fresh lemon zest to this it just makes it so bright and zingy and fresh I love this recipe and I sometimes do one can of chickpeas and one can of white beans if I want a little bit more texture but this made a great sandwich to accompany the leftover soup that I had on this day I just did lettuce tomato and white bean smash with a little bit more of that broccoli and spinach soup and this was such a cozy lunch but actually packed with veggies and so so good I just got back from a quick walk and I do mean a quick walk. I just walked around the block twice, but I really think, especially for those of you who work from home, taking short little breaks to get outside and just do even a quick walk, even if you only have five minutes, it makes such a big difference. And I always feel so much better when I get outside. So highly recommend adding that to your routine if you're not already. But now I'm gonna go ahead and film the pasta fagioli recipe. And this recipe, as I mentioned, is so special to me. This is a very old school Italian soup. And sometimes this style of cooking is known as peasant cooking or peasant recipes and that's because they really were genius at making a lot out of a little they used every single thing they had they used a ton of vegetables so a lot of these dishes happen to be very veggie forward they're also so delicious they make vegetables taste so good because they figured out how to incorporate them with a small amount of animal products to make those animal products which were expensive and hard to come by stretch and feed a lot more people by adding fresh spices and lots of vegetables. And so when I was learning about this style of cooking, I loved how economical it was. I loved how creative it was. And I really focused in on what the ham hock in this recipe traditionally does. And essentially it was mostly just the bone with a little bit of meat on it because they were trying to use everything they have and not let anything go to waste. And what that does is when it cooks with the vegetables and the water and the spices, it creates a broth that gives a little bit of smokiness, a little bit of fattiness, a kind of unctuous quality 
variety and also some savory richness, some depth, right? And so in order to mimic that with plants, I really had to play around. And what I discovered is that there are three key ingredients to this recipe that makes it totally vegan and still has all of that delicious depth. The first thing is simple. It's just olive oil. A little bit of olive oil can mimic the fat that would be rendered out of the ham hock and it helps to give the broth a kind of body and a richness. Then I add a little bit of smoked paprika, which gives obviously a bit of smokiness, but also just layers of complexity because when you're making a soup, just like when you're making a sauce, you're building complexity and you're building flavors on top of each other that all kind of blend together and become delicious. So that's what that is for. And then third and finally, we're gonna add a little bit of miso paste and the miso paste gives us that umami quality. It gives us depth. That's the thing that it gives you. It really is such a star ingredient, but the combination of all three of these things important on their own, but together they really make such a big difference and they make this soup taste so authentic and delicious. So I will put this whole recipe all written out with everything that you need in the description box below so you can make this at home. I'm gonna go film that and then I will show you the finished product. Filming days are really active days because you're prepping all the veggies, you're cooking the actual recipe, you're filming and photographing it, and then there's cleanup. And there's always more cleanup when I'm filming than when I'm just making it myself because I'm more focused on the shot than like not making a mess. I usually clean up while the soup is cooking, but here's another little sneak peek of the short that I created and a little overview of the recipe, which is linked below. You start by sauteing onions, carrots, and celery. You wanna cook this down for a good 10 minutes on medium heat, doing this slow really adds a lot of flavor. Then add garlic, salt, and smoked paprika with a little bit of the miso paste like we talked about earlier. I usually use a chickpea or a light miso. And then you add your beans, canned tomatoes, some bay leaf, and a veggie bouillon cube with some water. So you just literally throw everything into the pot and let it cook for two hours and it becomes so, so flavorful. Right before serving, you add your cooked pasta and three cups of kale. And to serve, I love to do a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil, some vegan Parmesan cheese, and red pepper flakes. Because I filmed that earlier in the afternoon, dinner was pretty much prepped and ready. So the only thing I made was this spinach artichoke dip. And I do have a recipe for this that went up last year around the holidays. So here it is. I'm gonna start by sweating a yellow onion over medium heat. You don't want this to really brown or caramelize. We're just going to saute for a couple minutes until translucent. In the meantime, I go ahead and I take one can of artichoke hearts and I add it to, you can do a food processor or blender, whatever you have. You just wanna pulse a few times until it's really finely chopped, basically like top an odd consistency. This is going to be absolutely perfect in our spinach artichoke dip. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add some garlic to the onions along with our chopped artichoke. Then I'm gonna take some thawed frozen spinach and squeeze all the extra water out just into a clean tea cloth like this. This is going to ensure that we have a really nice, thick, creamy dip. Then I pulse the spinach in the same food processor just so everything is really nice and small and cohesive. This is going to create the perfect consistency in our dip. All that's left to do is make the sauce, which is just cashews, plant milk, and some nutritional yeast with spices like salt, onion powder, and nutmeg, which is the secret ingredient. Nutmeg is so good with green vegetables like spinach. I'll add a little olive oil and fresh lemon juice, and that is it. It's like one of those throw everything into the blender and it's done kind of sauces, which I love. Add that to the pan along with some shredded vegan Parmesan cheese and the remaining plant milk, which I actually like to put in the blender and shake a little bit to make sure I get every last bit of that cream sauce into the pan. This is going to heat through, get nice and thick and creamy, and it's ready to serve. The artichokes and the spinach and the onions and the garlic become so creamy and just everything blends together so perfectly. I love the hints of lemon, a little bit of nutmeg and black pepper. It really ties it all together. So the reason that I made this dip was because my boyfriend and I were going to be watching the final episode of Only Murders in the Building, and I got this comment that you see here on the screen saying that I should do something themed to celebrate, and so this was my little wink and a nod because one of the main characters loves dips. I had some toasted baguette, some crunchy chips, and also veggies to dip into this while we watch the show. And my friend Laura loves making this recipe and she recommends putting lots of lemon on top and I totally agree. It really just takes it to the next level. So I brought that over to the table. I finished the soup with olive oil, red pepper flakes, and a vegan Parmesan cheese, which I love. I think the toppings just really add that little extra oomph and this was so good. Kind of like a grazy snacking, but also cozy dinner that was perfect for 
I guess it technically wasn't a movie night because we were watching a TV show, but it was the final episode of the series. We finally got to find out who did it. And this dinner was just a really fun way to mark the end of season three. So we really enjoyed that. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and that it gave you some good ideas. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye.